Hey folks, it's all about performance and strategies. We're going to be diving down into Jeremy from Financial Education, one of the largest finance YouTubers out there who recently gave full preview into the performance of his stock portfolio and some of the individual holdings he currently has, which I think is very strategic because so many YouTubers refuse to do this. And we're going to compare it to my own strategy, my own performances. Recently, I got my brokerages updating my performance. And I think this will give you clerical insight into your own risk tolerance and what works best for you because God God knows don't take financial advice from youtubers guys this is just going to be a really fun video today and it, damn it if you appreciate it hit that like button folks so let's get right into this we're only going to clip through a few aspects of this video and then again take a look at my own personal stock portfolio performance so let's get into it here's the returns uh first off we're looking at annualized returns once again this is calculated by fidelity investments not me throwing it in a spreadsheet not some guy chewing grizzly long cut <laughs> Uh, trying to run numbers and you know doing whatever he does okay this is this is fidelity investments numbers okay so over the past month i've way underperformed the market over the past three months i've way under underperformed the market these are the numbers okay year to date way underperformed the market the past year so i i'm very understanding if somebody started following me in the past 12 to 18 months why they would think i'm not good at what i do essentially which is stock picking I understand it. Like, I get it. The numbers are there. It's not like it's close. I've gotten wrecked. Wrecked. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing numbers. Embarrassing numbers. Disaster. But even despite that embarrassment of the past year, I'm still wrecking the market. It's just facts. Facts. 18.6% return over the past three years versus... So take a look at this because to be frank, I could not stomach this kind of volatility in my own personal portfolio as I constantly try and outperform the S&P 500 year over year to see a 52% correction in a single given year, half your portfolio wiped out. It is very hard to stomach and really gives insight into the strategy behind how Jeremy operates because he's looking for outsized returns. So obviously when the market flips the other way, he's going to see outsized losses on the other spectrum of it. But an 18% annualized against the S&P 500's 10% annualized over the last three years is very stellar, but he's going to offer some more insight into the broader actual full percentage return here in a second. This 10% S&P 500 uh, on an annualized return in versus uh, the Dow, which is at 9.5%. So think about that for a moment. All that carnage, and I'm still, still killing the market. Cumulative return over the last three years in the public count, 66.93% versus S&P 500s at 33%, Dow Jones at 31%. So yeah, there's that going on, right? So it's, again, past performance isn't indicative of future returns. That's the first thing that I want to point out here pretty strictly because it looks like he's just doubling the performance roughly of the S&P 500, offering that 33% return over the last three years versus his performance up 66%. But again, a lot of this is going to be variable on what the market conditions lead into because honestly, holding some of the individual positions he's holding, I mean, you really hope some of the, the individual picks he has really start to pan out, which is what I want to talk about from his strategic standpoint of picking stocks. So just take a listen. And, you know, I, I know what I already know, you know, and I'll get into, I'm going to show you all the numbers and every share I bought and sold in that account over the last several years. I already know that, you know, that my hater crowd is going to be like, Jeremy, if it wasn't for Tesla and if it wasn't for Elf, you wouldn't have got those returns. Fair. But at the end of the day, those were my stocks. And when it comes to my strategy, I'm gonna have some massive outliers. And those outliers are gonna perform so well that they will carry the account to victory. I'm gonna have a few superstars on my team that it doesn't matter how good the other team is, we will win because we're simply better. And now I'm going to be hypercritical here. There is nothing wrong with this strategy. Implementing his ideas is basically buying a couple dozen stocks and really relying on maybe, you know, a half, maybe two, three, four of them to completely outperform and drive your portfolio to those outsized returns. This is very indicative of perhaps venture capital. A lot of people will invest into 10 venture capital companies and only really rely on one to three of them to really bring home those thousand X returns, making up for the losses from the other stocks. However, it's very speculative in nature because if you did not pick those few companies for whatever reason, Tesla, Elf, the stocks he's talking about, you would be absolutely wrecked. I mean, I've seen it time and time again. There was a guy on uh, 
Dave Ramsey that ended up picking PayPal, Netflix, Meta. His handful of stock picks seemed like a great idea until this year hit and his portfolio as well as experiencing an outsized loss of over 50%, which is again, if you can handle those stomached returns and you think your strategy is going to be prudent over the long term, then all you can really do is pan it out and see when it actually comes into fruition. But if it doesn't, you have to hold yourself accountable and make sure you're following that strategy and know when it no longer is working. When it comes to my investing philosophy, I never risk it all. And you'll see that in the portfolio. I never risk it all on just one stock. I make a very well diversified portfolio and some stocks won't work out. Some stocks I will have to sell for losses. And some stocks are going to hit so big that it's going to make up for all the losses plus, plus make me way outperform the market. So I have a very different uh, approach to the market and a very different strategy. Now again, being hypercritical, just skipping through the video to take a look at his individual brokerage accounts. This is one of his primary accounts. He does reveal another one, but I want to fixate on this one because I'm going to argue that he's actually not that diversified at all. Like diversification is a tool set to protect yourself from outsized losses, like seeing your account drop 50% in a single year, but we can see at the current market environment with the stock picks he has, where they sit in his account today, he's got 23% of his entire account sitting in Tesla. Um, again, I would say that's very under diversified. He's got 16% in Meta and he's got another 13% in Corsair. And those seem to be like the primary drivers. And it's nice to see things like Google in here even, but Google's 1% of his whole portfolio. He doesn't have an equal weighting across the board. It doesn't look like he's taken major, major profits. I know he's taken a lot of profits on Tesla, but the positioning size is still insanely large. And coming from a guy who is into spreadsheets, I did my best off the numbers on the screen to compile an actual portfolio spreadsheet preview so you can get a better understanding of the diversification itself. Again, the numbers don't line up one for one, but I did do my best and you can really see how Corsair, Tesla, Honest, and Meta are the primary drivers of his future returns within this public account. And if you guys enjoy spreadsheets, support the channel. Go over to PortfolioSpreadsheet.com, link in the description below if you want to support the channel and try out some of my portfolio tracking spreadsheets. But I'm not trying to beat down Jeremy here. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm just pointing out things that I find relatively interesting because they're not things I would personally do. And I'm very critical of my own personal strategy. So let's just compare it to what I've done. We'll take a look at some of the returns. And again, past performance doesn't equal future returns, guys. Keep that in mind. Just because it worked yesterday doesn't mean it's going to work for the next three years. Because taking a look, guys, these are my primary brokerage accounts, my largest being my tax-free savings account, which currently since inception back in probably mid-2017 is up 142% against the S&P 500, this dotted kind of uh, teal line, which is only up 98%. So I'm not, not doubling the performance of the S&P in that account, but that's because I'm primarily invested in different index funds at this point. We have my managed account, the longest standing account that I've had for the last several years, up 283%, almost tripling the performance of the S&P. My uh, RRSP account, which is up 260%. The reason that's so impressive is because it just started in 2019 and is actually going into an all-time high. This data comes into the beginning of November. And again, I want to explain to you my strategy here because mine is not that indifferent from Jeremy's, but the difference between me and Jeremy is I am petrified of market volatility. I could not handle 50% corrections in my portfolio. And the way I've avoided those losses is primarily through diversification and weighting control. Basically, indifferent to Jeremy, I would also pick a handful of individual stocks, usually weighting them no more than five or 10% at the absolute most. And companies like Tesla, when I was holding it, as it would run up as represented in my RSP here, guys, I would trim the profits take the profits and invest them in stabilized long-term ETFs, mostly dividend focused like VYM, SCHD, which is why we can start seeing that account start hitting all time highs here. And I got hit on a lot of investments doing this as Jeremy has with things like Momentus, for example, where I saw a 50% drop, but because I wouldn't put much more than that 5% of my whole portfolio in it, when it dropped, it was like a 2% hiccup in the entire bucket of my overall holdings. So I kind of have a mixed investment thesis of really speculative, but very mitigated. And that kind of old person style investing because my parents moving into retirement, this is not a strategy for them. So I kind of take the best of both worlds here, that kind of Warren Buffett style investing, very foundational kind of dividend cash flow focused investments. Yeah, you're not going to see crazy 20, 30,000 X gains on them over a year, but hey, you know, you're going to get stabilized performance with very limited downside. And even if that does take a hit, I do have a bucket of those kind of stocks and ETFs to really protect that, that, that those kind of investments. Now, I'm not saying this is a strategy that's going to work for me 
moving forward because as my account has scaled over time, I've become more fixated on stabilized investments and I'm continually making smaller and smaller investments into speculative based companies, meaning I'm not going to see the same kind of performance to the upside as I did through 2020 and 2021. But I would argue the fact that those are very unusual years that were very much driven by money printing and a lot of hype surrounding some of these speculative investments that I was prudent enough to take profits on and continue to mitigate them down to a small percentage weighting until I finally decided I didn't want to be part of it during this market cycle and sold out of them, which has only ever worked to my favor that we can see in this performance chart. And moving forward more prudently, guys, I don't need to chase thousand percent gainers, which is why I don't know why Jeremy continues to implement this. This very active strategy of investing because once you get into the millions of dollars, do you really need more than even a five or 10% return from the market that would make you easily six figures a year, which is probably going to be more than, you know, some of those small investments in his portfolio that really don't make up one, more than one or 2% of the entire account. So I, like I said, Jeremy, I think it's part of his business. It's part of his persona. He has got rhino skin and I feel like he's going to be able to bear the brunt of this market correction. The problem is, is I don't think most of you are, and most of you are are experiencing a kind of drop like this for the first time in your entire investing career. And actually, before I kind of log out of this, I always like to iterate the fact that back at the beginning of my investing career, when I was very speculative focused, my entire accounts dropped about 45, 50% within the first year. And I didn't make a, a an ounce of capital gain until about two years into my entire investing career before things really started to, to click with me and I started seeing those outsized gains. But again, don't get caught up on what YouTubers are saying. We're all kind of looking out for ourselves. We're all doing this because we make money off YouTube. Jeremy to quit doing what he's doing would probably not really lead to more views for his channel. And again, I'm not trying to shoot down Jeremy. I think he has a very prudent investment strategy that works for his risk tolerance. He's got rhino skin to deal with the criticism, to deal with the market volatility. And we will see over time how that strategy continues to work out for him as my strategy, revealing it on this channel every single week to you guys and being fully transparent. We can see over time what the performance is going to look like, but Hey, I'm just some rando kid here, guys, with no financial background, outperforming Buffett, Jeremy, you name it. I haven't seen an account that has seen the same kind of gain. But hey, I'm sure there's an outlier. And if that's you, I'd love to hear about it in that comment section below. But stay cool, stay awesome, and I'll catch you in the next one.